Hey everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, this is my shop. We're working on an LBSC Titch locomotive. That's what the book looks like. And this is what the locomotive itself looks like. Um, this week we'll be, we'll be making the snifter valve that goes in here. And this should be a useful episode to those of you building a project like this. Because the book really doesn't go into a lot of detail. I found this um, kind of pieced together a design for it looking on the internet and with another book that I have the shop shed and road book which was also published by LBSC as you can see here I've got a lot of the other parts and pieces laid out things that that go in the the smoke box assembly here's the door for it um, so I'll be working on a lot of this a lot more of the small parts this week and it should be in the next upcoming episode uh, so I hope you find that interesting if you uh, have any questions, please ask. If you would, please give me a thumbs up. Help pass the word because I'm still trying to grow the channel. And like I said, I think this, this will be useful and interesting to everybody that's interested in live steam. So I sure hope so. And I hope you have a great week. And I uh, hope you enjoy this short episode this week. Thanks, everybody. Next thing I need to make for the titch is the snifting valve. And the, the LBSC titch book doesn't really go into much detail about the snifter. Luckily, I do have the Shop Shed and Road book, and if you look on page 90, they showed plans for basically two different styles. At first, I was looking at making this one, but there's not a lot of room on the top of my smoke box really to allow for that. So I decided to make the bottom fitting one, and there is, in the Shop Shed and Road book, there's some good sketches about how to, how to make it and a good description. Luckily, I also found a website, and this is kind of what I'm patterning mine after, is this one that you see here. And simply put, you can see all my scribbling on it, basically I had a piece of 3 8 inch hex brass. I turned down a 5 16 inch long portion of it, um, and then made a nice undercut, and then I threaded quarter by 40. I did a deep center drill for a connection there with, you know, piping connection. That's where the, uh, that'll connect to the wet header. And then I left a little portion here for a wrench, turned this part of the body where my thumb is down to 3 8 inch diameter. And the center part is threaded quarter by 40. So this is where the ball is gonna be inside there. And I'll have to nick the inside of that so that the ball doesn't seat. Then I'm gonna make a bottom half out of 5 16 inch hex and I'll show you that. I'll make that tomorrow night. Okay, next up in the snifter valve is to make the bottom half of it, and I'm starting over here with some 5 16 inch hex brass, and I've just turned this part down to right at a quarter of an inch, and I'll show you on there, so just a shade over. So I'm going to put the undercut, oops, sorry about the camera there, I'm going to use my cutoff tool and put an undercut in here so that when I thread it, it'll have a nice clean separation. I should say before I started everything, <clears throat> I was extremely careful to face this off. Although this edge is not that critical, this edge right here is going to become the sealing edge against the bottom of the other fitting. So it's important to have the, the threads clean, the undercut clean, and this face right here to be very clean as well. And this part matters in as much as that's where the ball is going to be. <clears throat> so when I go in to drill and then eventually make the ball seat, I want to make sure this, this face is not goofed up in any way. I actually removed about a sixteenth of an inch of material. There was an old residual hole there and it was off center because it was the end of a long drilling process. So this is kind of the business end of the lower piece is what I'm trying to say. So you want to make sure all this stuff is precise. Okay, there's the use of the homemade cutoff tool. It's made out of a piece of square bar stock. It's super heavy duty and I really like it. And as you can see, there's a little, about a 15 thou deep undercut and that'll be the end of the threaded portion. Okay, here I've made the thread and hopefully you can see that the importance of the undercut is that it gives the, the threads a clean stopping place so you're not and you're getting full engagement threads all the way um, here's a picture of the tailstock die holder that I use for this kind of work so now that the threads are on now I can center drill and drill it 
I think it's number 40. I'm going to end up reaming this part eighth inch, so I'll probably just pick a numbered drill that's just slightly under an eighth of an inch. And here I've center drilled, just showing all the steps. I do. This is tap paste that's on the center drill. Another thing, I like these long center drills that are like this, the length of a jobber drill. They're pretty handy. And here I've put in a couple of marks using the cutoff tool, the little eighth inch that I'm going to leave for the a wrench access, and then a 5 16 inch portion that I'm going to turn down to a quarter inch in diameter. Kind of wanted to do a little stop action picture here. You can see the setup and how I'm doing this. Um, rather than parting it off and flipping it around and only have this much portion to hold it steady in, I just decided to angle my tool so that I could get it down to a quarter inch or just very close in this method. Um, and so I just took a method using the, the uh, met dial calipers here, or excuse me, the digital calipers. So as, as you can see, I only have 37 thou left to take off. So I'll go ahead and get this down to, uh, with very, very carefully get it down to a quarter of an inch. And I'll end up with the exact design and pattern that I'm looking for, and then I can do the cutoff. Okay, got it down. It is just a shade under a quarter of an inch. So I'm thinking that is just perfect actually have it squinched down pretty tight so yeah just a shade under 250 thou so that'll be good i'm gonna smooth out this little part right here and um, then cut it off and then we'll reverse it and uh, ream it so everything will be clear and then i, I do have to remember to make the ball seat on this end and next thing to do for the base of the snifter is to put a, a stainless steel ball in there and smack it just to make a seat. So since that's a two-handed operation, I'm going to stop viewing, stop videoing at this point. But I did want to show my setup. I use the part in the 5C collet block, and usually I put the block in the vise just to hold it extra steady and just give it a nice wrap with a ball peen hammer. Okay, now that that's done, I just gave it a nice tap wrap with the the ball peen hammer. I, I do it like this. Obviously, you use the flat part of the ball peen. You don't use the the rounded part. Next thing to do in the final step in making this will be to get a sharp chisel type device and make some nicks at the top so the ball can't seat against the top. All right now I'm holding the upper housing in a 3 8 inch 5c collet chuck in the same square thing and put it in the vise and I use a little this is a piece of tool steel looks like a, a broken tap that um, I must have ground down years ago, but it makes a nice, the book calls for a little chisel and that serves well for this purpose. And I don't know if this will show up on the video or not, but there, the point is to just to make a couple of dis, or several disruptions or ch nicks as the book calls it around the base there so that the ball can't get sucked back in and create a vacuum the other way. You just don't want it sealing that way. The only way you want it to seal is when there's steam coming out and um, it'll blow the ball shut against the bottom and then um, when the steam comes off to prevent a vacuum from it create, being created in the cylinders the um, steam shuts off and then so the pressure is released the ball comes back and it'll rest against that top part as fresh air comes in but you want a little space there so fresh air can continue to come in and that's that's what the purpose of the nicks are at the base of the hole to uh, create a little disrupted All right, surface. So here's the completed snifter valve. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the, you can hear the little ball. I put a fresh ball in there. You don't want to use the one you use to, to make the smacking seat. So there's a fresh ball in there and I just reassembled it. It's ready to go. So the next plan, since this was so easy, simple, I decided to go ahead and make a couple of nuts. Plan on using 532nd inch tubing. So I got my 5 16 inch um, hex stock for the nut stock in there and I've laid out the initial drills that I need. The center drill of course and then a number 21 drill for the through drill and then 
The, the larger one on the end that has the blue tape around it is number two. That's the tapping size drill for the quarter by 40 threads that we're going to use. And I already, I've used this before for this very purpose. And I have that tape ring ar around it to control the depth of the drill space there that I need for the, the tapping. You don't want to drill all the way through the nut. And after the tap drill is done, then just a simple matter of actually tapping. So this is a quarter by 40 tap and the tap and the tail stock dot, uh, tap holder. So just tap that out. I like to run it through by hand. I'll, I'll use the inching function on the lathe to kind of use a little bit of power to get it started. And then after I run it back, then I go in by hand to make sure it's all smooth all the way. And I'll pull it out by hand as well. And then all we got to do is cut it off. File the edges of the nut there and cut the thing off. All right, that was pretty easy and fun. Just cut that off. I did clean up the back a little bit. There's always a little rim that's left when you from the cutoff tool. So I cut it off and clean. I filed a little the edges a little bit, but it's good to go. That one's all set for a 532nd inch tube. Now to make another. All right, we'll wind up this week's short episode with a little view of the finished snifter valve. You take the top off of it, and I'll show you the little stainless steel ball bearing that I've got in there. It's a 532nd inch ball, which is a little larger than the eighth inch they call for in the plans, but it'll definitely work. So there you have it. Put that all together, keep it together, and I've, as you can see here, I've got the little nuts that we just made. I keep them on a little pipe cleaner, and that'll all go in a Ziploc bag. Just to orient you to where this will sit, here's the smoke box, and it'll go inside the smoke box, something like this. So, thanks again everybody. If you would, pass the word. Give me a thumbs up. Ask any questions if you have them. I'll do my best to answer. Hope you all have a great week. Thanks.